Hey everyone, great to see you. It's a wonderful day to do mathematics. Let's do an AP Statistics review lesson. This is going to be number two from 2018 Free Response. All you have to do is Google it and you can find the questions and a detailed answer key. What I suggest is that you do the questions on your own first, then watch the video, and then go and look at the scoring guidelines to see how many points you would have gotten. Let's have some fun. Okay, so in this problem, we're given a confidence interval. That's the reverse of how it usually works. Usually they want us to compute or calculate a uh, confidence interval, but here they give it to us and it's a 95% confidence interval for a proportion. So as you can see, I'm writing down the equation, the formula for a confidence interval for a proportion. And this is not exactly on the reference table. What's on the reference table is the general format, statistic plus or minus a critical value times the standard error of the statistic. All right. Now what I'm doing is I'm trying to find the p hat. The p hat is the midpoint of the interval, the exact middle. So to do that, you add and divide by two. It's like taking the average and you get 0.70. The Z star for 95% confidence is 1.96. That's one that I have memorized. If you don't have that memorized, or if it's a different percent confidence level, like 96%, let's say, you'd have to find the area under the normal distribution, uh, or you'd have to find the Z scores that capture the middle 96%, let's say, and you could do that with an inv norm. All right, then I'm plugging in p hat of 0.7 into the standard error, radical p hat times one minus p hat over n, n we don't know. That's what part A is asking us to find, is what's the sample size? Together, z star times the standard error give you the margin of error, right? So 1.96 times the standard error is equal to the margin of error. So if you're given an interval and you wanna find the margin of error, it's what they added and subtracted to the statistics. So it's what, what did they add and subtract to 0 0.70 to make this interval? So one way that works every time to get the margin of error is to subtract the upper minus the lower and divide that by two. You'll get half the width of the interval because that was what was added and subtracted. So it's half the width of the interval or half the length of the interval. All right, so let me simplify each side of this equation. I'm gonna solve this for n, that's my ultimate goal, right? So 0.7 times 0.3 is 0.21. I'm going to the calculator to simplify the right-hand side. 0.816 minus the lower boundary of that interval, which is 0.584. I'm using parentheses, and then I'm gonna divide by two. I get 0.116, that's the margin of error. That's what was added and subtracted to 0.7 to create this interval. Okay, now what do I do? This is all algebra. I'm gonna divide both sides by 1.96. Again, I'm gonna probably go to a calculator for that. So 0.116 divided by 1.96. Let's find out what we get. Point zero five nine one eight, and you want to have three digit accuracy in your final answer. So I'm not going to round until the very end. So I'm going to keep around five or six digits of accuracy. Oh, and since this is a sample size question, my final answer is going to always be rounded up. Okay. Because if there's any decimal part, if there's any remainder, you can't have a decimal portion of a person in your sample. So you always need to round up. Even if it's like 0.1, you would still need to round up. Okay, so now I'm squaring both sides. 0 0.05918 squared is 0 0.0035. And I'm gonna multiply both sides by n. n is a positive number, so if this were an inequality, you wouldn't have to worry about switching around the symbol. All right, and now I'm gonna divide both sides by 0 0.0035. So 0 0.21 divided by 0 0.0035 is gonna give me my answer, so 0 0.21 divided by second answer, so I don't have to sacrifice any digits of accuracy, 59.95, so 60 students was the sample size that was used here. We always round up when we're trying to calculate a sample size. And that's my answer for part A. Students is the unit, by the way. Always put units if you know what the units are. Let's go to part B. Okay, given the method used by the environmental science teacher, explain how bias might have been introduced and describe how the bias might affect the point estimate. So I'm gonna type out this answer. So bias may have been introduced 
since students are directly responding to the environmental science teacher, right? Because the student may want to please the environmental science teacher, so they might give a positive answer when the truth is that they don't recycle. So I'm going to type that up. More, more students may answer yes to the question than actually recycle. And so what is that going to do to the point estimate? So the point estimate of the proportion of all students who would respond yes is going to be overestimated consistently or systematically. Okay, when you're, uh, when you're talking about bias, the definition of bias is any systemic, any systemic issue that may overestimate or underestimate consistently. So we want to indicate that in our answer. So that's my answer for part B. All right, let's take a look at part C. So part C is coming up with a potentially less biased estimate. So it involves flipping a fair coin. So they're going to flip every student's going to flip a coin and if it's heads they're forced to respond no regardless of their answer. If it's tails they give the truth, okay? So they won't feel as bad directly interacting with the environmental science teacher. So part I of part C wants to know what the expected number is. Since this is a binomial probability experiment, the mean or expected value is n times p. And I think that's on the reference table. n times p here would be 150. So if everyone's flipping a coin, we'd expect 150 out of 300 to be required to respond no, because those are the ones that flipped a heads. So we'd expect around 150 heads and 150 Tails. That's the expected value. That was pretty easy. Part double I here uh, shows that 213 of the 300 responded no. Based on the results of the sample, give a point estimate for the proportion of all students at the high school who would respond yes to the question. Okay, so 213, I'm going to subtract off the 150 that we expect to roll heads and be forced to say no. So 63 out of the 150 um, say no truthfully, or we expect. This is our prediction. That's why I'm putting a little hat on top of that P. We don't actually know the truth. And let me find the complement of that. 150 minus 63 is going to be the number of truthful yeses. So 87 of 150 that flipped a tails and gave the truth are the yes. Now, they didn't want the number, they wanted the proportion. I could leave this as a fraction, 87 out of 150, but let's get a decimal because decimals are a little bit easier to digest, a little bit easier to compare directly. 0.58 is the proportion of yeses that we would expect. That's our point estimate for the truthful yeses. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you had a great time doing math with me. Don't forget to subscribe to my videos on YouTube. Click the bell for the notifications so that you can get every video as it's released and continue your journey, your exploration through the world of mathematics. What an exciting time it is to be a student. I'll see you next time. May the math be with you.